This is Spencer from the MacGuffin, and today I'm joined by Harley Jessup of Pixar, uh, one of the people working on Coco, which is coming out here next week. Um, the story of a boy who uh, runs away from his family and ends up in the world of the dead, I guess is the best way to describe it, without yeah. uh, or trying to make it as basic as possible. It's a much more sort of complex story. Um, I want to start with... As a production designer, how challenging is it to sort of capture that world and that culture and sort of give it this authentic presentation without becoming cheesy? Uh -huh. And you know, because it seems like there's so many different audiences you're trying to play to. You want to mm -hmm. honor the original material, and yet it it just seems like a very delicate balance to try and find a way to capture it and make it accessible at the same time. Oh yes, yeah. Well. Um, Every project, no, no matter where it's at, even if it's in a different uh, universe, we try to research uh, what, as close as we can uh, uh, to, to the civilization to create a uh, believable world. And uh, with Coco, it was a huge treat to get to design uh, with Mexico as the setting for the film. And uh, we used, we went on many trips to Mexico and um, each trip kind of got us deeper and deeper into the uh, uh, the history, the culture, the the celebration of Dia de los Muertos itself and um, its meaning, and it you know wound up being a more than just research for a movie, kind of a profound emotional experience because I really hadn't expected the holiday to. Um, be as meaningful. It's something that I wish we did more in the oh, United yeah. States in, in a certain way. That, yeah. uh, 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 but that that was the rewarding part about um, doing this film. Every film is a learning experience, and you know, like what we did on Ratatouille, we wanted we looked at French culture and the French cooking. Just scene. imagine some awesome eating of French food. Just being like, I need to do some more research yes, here. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, uh, we wanted to make, make sure the people in France saw that we got it right and that we're caricaturing things, but we're, it, it's an authentic world, a uh, believable world that uh, always at Pixar is what we're going for. And, uh, you know, I think we, uh, for Coco, we went beyond what we would probably do on a regular animated feature because... Uh, you know, it winds up, uh, the whole film is kind of a c celebration of Mexico. Yeah. And uh, the music, the culture, the art, the uh, just the settings um, were so inspiring. Do you have to do a lot of testing for stuff like that? Just because it's one of those things I imagine, like, you know, you go to Mexico, you have this amazing experience. But, like, I, I mean, I don't know how deeply you have to research something like the Dio de los Muertos or Mexican culture before you're like, you're like, I got it. It's, oh, uh -huh. it's still like, it feels like you're like, does this feel authentic to audiences or something? Oh, yes. Because I know you guys are doing a lot in terms of release in Mexico, mm -hmm. I believe. And in, in the U.S., I heard a lot about the Spanish language releases that are going on here. Uh -huh. So was that something that was really heavily integrated into your production of this movie is sort of checking how elements of it resonated with oh, Mexico? Uh, well, the, uh, we had cultural advisors yeah. on for, uh, very early on, and uh, they weren't, they were so helpful, and not just in a sort of, oh, I, I get this right, or get uh, uh, in a policing way. It was more like they were adding details to the story that uh, we awesome. would not have known about in the settings, in the uh, the set dressing the and, and the character costumes, uh, uh, their help was really important, awesome. isn't it? What is it? What is it like in terms of the challenge of like creating this world? Because I think back amongst, I was thinking about this morning, all the Pixar movies, with the exception of maybe Monsters Inc. or uh -huh. maybe Toy Story. This is uh -huh. the most like out there setting, you know, dinosaurs oh, in yeah. the world, that's pretty standard, uh -huh. you know, heroes in uh -huh. the world, that's pretty standard, fish under the sea, it's pretty oh, standard, yeah. but this one is just like, you guys are creating this entire, like, uh -huh. megalopolis in the world of the dead and all this other stuff, like, how 
fun is that and how challenging is uh, it because it seems like you it, like <laughs> it, it seems like it could be overwhelming to try yeah. and create something like well, that. well it, it, it yes exactly they, it could almost be anything and uh it was overwhelming at certain points and challenging but really fun too they yeah. uh because uh, uh lee unkrich and uh, adrian molina the d directors were up for trying to show something we've never uh, shown on the screen yeah. before. You want it to be uh, images that are great, but also really tied to the culture that we were uh, working in. So that uh, even though it's not mentioned in the film, there's a logic to these mile high towers that mm. we show that surround every, yeah. it's kind of an infinite environment yeah, of these. Very much and so. uh, sort of at, at the base, they're uh, through the top, they're like layers of history uh, with the Mesoamerican pyramids at the huh. bottom, uh, uh, up through colonial time cathedrals, up uh, through uh, Victorian Mexican Revolution era wow. period, and up to the present where there are um, uh, cranes on top uh, creating new uh, houses for ancestors That's cool. to, com to come. That's very cool. So, it it, it makes all, you want to rewatch it, like knowing this kind of uh, stuff, just so I can look at the background oh, and just I be hope like, "People get so it's, yeah." I, I, it's uh, there's such there's such new, nuanced subtlety oh, there uh -huh. that I mean, I like I, I appreciate like the complexity of making uh -huh. it, but I, like I like now I'm like, oh, I want to look and see if I can identify <laughs> well, the different layers. It, it, it's uh, it's subtle, but I think if I think the audience, my theory is that they can feel it. Mm. They can. Uh, it, it, it wants to be believable, a, a world that looks like it works. And we tried to, to connect all the towers with these crazy trolley cars yeah, yeah, yeah. and stuff to, and have it be fun and really appealing and colorful. Um, uh. Well, that's, that's a great point, too, the color of the movie. Like, this is probably one of the most vibrant movies I've oh. ever seen, honestly. Definitely, what, uh, what, what as is, far as what I've worked What is on. that like as a challenge in terms of like artistically trying to capture so much uh -huh. color? I mean, I mean, it feels like it's one of those things that it's like actually gets yeah. to a scientific perspective where you're like, how much color can the human eye yeah. perceive? How can we sort of maximize the amount of color uh -huh. that you can sort of see at one time? Stuff like that. What was, what was the challenge like there? Because it, I mean, it is, it's vibrant, it's beautiful, uh -huh. but it seems like... Yeah, it seems like a, a huge step past most movies, just oh. in terms of the the vibrance of the. Well, color. I actually, I, you know, creating a world that is always super colorful and saturated, and uh, was a big challenge. And uh, Daniel Feinberg, the uh, uh, director of photography for lighting, uh, it, she totally, as far as I'm concerned, knocked it out of the park. We worked together on. I wanted to give her colors on the settings that she could deal with, uh, but she. Uh, the Land of the Dead it has a very theatrical lighting uh, approach, and we knew that we'd ha have to be very careful and judicious, otherwise the audience would just be overwhelmed with, you know, every color in the yeah. universe, it starts to feel like nothing then, because it kind of cancels it out. So mm -hmm. we, there, there are planned quieter moments, uh, more desaturated moments within the Land of the Dead that, uh, that help uh, add... Yeah, I think, accent of yeah, the quietness. juxtaposition between the the super vibrant colors yes. and the non such room. It definitely it definitely comes through. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that's very cool. Um, I wanted to ask about your background. So you've worked on films such as Hook and James and the Giant Peach. One is live action, one is a claymated movie. How did that sort of influence you as you work into this realm of? digital animation because I mean obviously with live action there's probably the greatest restraints in terms of what you can and can't do especially in the early 90s compared mm -hmm. to now like there's not the CGI that there was now uh -huh. but has that sort of working with those restraints made you more um, creative in how you approach problems uh -huh. because it feels like now with CGI and the things you do oh, at Pixar, yeah. like you can literally do anything you like. Yeah. I want a bunny jumping upside down uh -huh. that's blue, uh -huh. and like I mean, you can do anything. Yeah. Ha did having to work under those constraints help you become more creative? Did it help you sort of become better at achieving those goals that you want? What did uh -huh. that sort of influence on your work at Pixar? Uh, well, I I feel lucky to to have gotten to work in uh, in uh, live action and visual effects and and stop motion. It, it's they've all because they're three-dimensional 
media too, uh, they've all influenced uh, how I approach the design of films. And uh, there's a, a, there are a lot of live action influences in uh, uh, Coco and the films I've done, and I think all the Pixar films that uh, were very inspired by great uh, cinematography mm -hmm. and lighting. And I approach uh, a set at Pixar the same way I would a uh, live action set. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, uh, or a stop motion set. Uh, you're creating an environment that's going to capture real light and you want it. It's all the same thing. It, it's all in support of the story, trying to, to show some backstory on the characters and where they live. And it helps inform why they're acting like they are. And uh, so this, the final outcome is really similar. Uh, and I, I feel lucky to have more than an animation background uh, to bring to what, what we're doing. No, I think it's very cool. Um, one of the things that I was concerned about while watching the movie, but apparently according to my audience and probably from the work I've done, it was not a concern at all, was the, the notion of the world of the dead sort of being put forth to a kid environment and, oh, and uh -huh. how that sort of like would juxtapose, you know, like we're dealing with something that's yes, the concept, the concept of death, dealing uh -huh. with things dying uh -huh. and how you sort of make that palatable to an all ages oh, yeah. sort of um, film audience. Uh -huh. What was that like in terms of trying to figure out, like, could you make a skull? Certainly a oh, certain yes. amount of like, <laughs> like how, yeah. how difficult is it to sort of make that to a kid friendly sort yeah. of environment? Well, that, that was one of the main concerns starting out, starting on the movie, describing it to someone who hadn't, uh, didn't know what we were doing. It's like, oh, that sounds kind of scary and creepy. And uh, so uh, one of our first jobs was to figure out how to create appealing skeletons mm -hmm. that the audience would uh, uh, understand and sympathize with and laugh at. and. Um, so uh, there were passionate arguments in the art department of, oh, the skeleton shouldn't have eyes, and how do we do lip sync? We, uh, uh, but we don't want them just being chomping teeth, you know. It's, yeah. uh, and so uh, uh, we tested and tested and tested, did clay sculpts. I had everybody in the art department, uh, even if they weren't sculptors, create a, a clay sculpt of what they were passionate about. And uh, uh, and it, we, I think we wound on up on something that, a design that's very expressive. Yeah. It's a fantasy version. It's not like a skeleton from a grave, mm. uh, uh, but because these are living creatures, living characters. Uh, and uh, we wanted to create something that the audience could relate to and wouldn't question. And, and nobody's, nobody's questioned. Well, yeah. I mean, at the, at yeah. the screen, like there were definitely tons of kids there and I heard nary a peep at oh, any good. moment that anyone seemed at all upset by uh -huh. what was going on. So, I mean, you clearly achieve that, that element of it. Like, and yet at the same time, there is this undertone of the death. Oh yes. With some of the characters and stuff like that. Uh -huh. How is it, how is it in terms of like creating that balance for adults and kids where, uh -huh. you know, like you, you work very hard to make uh -huh. these skeletons, um, relatable to children oh yes but at the same time there is this very complex um yes. <laughs> story particularly like there's oh, some wow. moments with the bell for instance that <laughs> i will say i was shocked to see in a kid movie and how, how do you how do you sort of keep those simultaneous levels uh -huh. working because i mean it's definitely something that pixar is very skilled at sort of balancing uh -huh. creating a story for everyone but in particular this one i was like wow this is actually kind of kind of a deep uh -huh. sto like moment yes, for the story. yeah well, and uh, the movie, because of those themes, uh, wants to take it seriously in a certain way. And, and the idea of kids uh, uh, knowing and remembering their ancestors uh, was something that uh, uh, is definitely the, at the heart of the movie. Mm. Uh, uh, but uh, really on handling the nuance of those ideas, uh, Lee and... Uh, Lee Unkrich and uh, Adrian Molina, the directors, and Jason Katz uh, leading the story team, they were uh, kind of carefully weaving this puzzle of a story together. Uh, and, uh, um, you know, in, in the art department, I feel like we're 
our main job is to support that story. So uh, there were many incarnations and twists and turns over the years uh, as we were working on the story, but um, I, I have to credit them with uh, uh, <laughs> figuring out how to deal with those sensitive themes. Yeah. Um, so the last thing I want to talk about is the music in the movie, which is obviously uh -huh. a very large element to it. How challenging is it to sort of try and capture that musical, cultural aspect that is an important part of this movie? Like you might even say the driving factor of the movie uh -huh. in a lot of ways. Um, because it plays such an important role, and yet it's very handled very well, very, um, oh, thank you. um, it, it, it sort of permeates the culture in the, uh -huh. in the movie. How do you sort of create that? You know, I, I get with, you know, like colors, you're like, okay, let's make this more vibrant uh -huh. and this sort of desaturate. But uh -huh. at the same time, how do you translate something that is inherently not visual into sort of a visual oh, uh -huh. capacity? Well, you know, I feel like we're supporting the music too, when we can, uh, we early on, you know, not many audiences have seen it. We did a test before we had done any uh, production on the film, and uh, it was sort of all about music and dance and and uh, the regional costumes. Uh, and because we tried to show, we showed five different regional costumes, and we, you know, there were also technical questions. The costumes are very layered and, oh, yeah. and uh, rich, and to see whether we could do that. And but the test is a, a three-minute long. Um, uh, uh, camera move through the this, uh, uh, street of the Day of the Dead and or the Land of the Dead, and we, it was kind of a proof of concept. And a lot of the things we learned on on that test, we uh, were able to apply. There are many different kinds of music in the film, yeah. and uh, that really reflects our experience in Mexico. Music was everywhere, and uh, uh, and uh, I love what Michael Giacchino, uh, Camilo La Lara. Uh, and um, uh, Bobby Lopez and uh, uh, and Kristen a Anderson Lopez uh, did uh, on the music. On yeah, it's phenomenal. Um, well, thank you so much, Harley. I wish you the best of luck. I can't wait to see what you guys do next. I oh, mean, this thanks, is uh, an excellent film. I I definitely encourage everyone to check it out. Oh. It 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 is perfectly timed to come out of Thanksgiving. It is a real family friendly film, and it it does have a lot of complexity that. Um, People will probably enjoy as they get older because they didn't realize it the first time through. So um, thank you so much for doing this, and I wish you My the best pleasure. of luck. Thanks, Spencer.